Hello students and everyone at home. This lockdown studies have been affected. Many students are confused with the hundred ways to study out there. However, we had gone through this app called Edzam by Sundrami class and would like to talk about it with you all. Today, there are so many live lectures happening and kids lose interest in watching them as they are pre-scheduled. Some of them are not interactive and some of them are boring. Students also don't get study material as per their syllabus and often burdened with a lot of videos and random apps. In order to address this, Sundaram has launched the Edzam app. Edzam app is specially made for Bal Bharati board students and is exactly as per the Bal Bharati board textbooks. The app has videos, MCQ tests, revision, video notes, and much more. And it's for students from class one all the way to class 10 with a whole lot of exciting features and is already being used by some of the state board students. A large part of learning on the app is self-study. Edzam provides guidance like a personal tutor with digital education. The understanding level increases and each concept can be learned in depth. With the Edzam app, everything is available with the tap of a button. So don't waste your money on expensive apps and switch to the right approved way, which is the Edzam way. Today, we're going to bring to you a set of experts who are going to give you a brief insight into what is school going to be when you return. And we have so many questions about different areas of the COVID-19 problem. So we have a medical doctor, we have a nutritionist, and we have a fitness expert. So these are the three people uh, that basically are going to sort of help you to understand how you can keep yourself safe from three different angles, that is from the medical perspective, from the nutrition perspective, and from a fitness perspective. So from the medical perspective, we have Dr. Anuj Tiwari, who's a senior registrar in the Department of Medicine at Dr. R. N. Cooper Hospital and HBT Medical College, Mumbai. Joining us from the nutrition side, we have Ekta Sood, who's a nutrition, a dietitian, and a lifestyle coach. She has a extensive experience in working with online platforms on nutrition and lifestyle. Along with that, we have a celebrity fitness trainer in Jitendra Behera. Jitendra has got a wide experience of a set of skills that covers nutrition, weight management, fitness, karate instructor, as a celebrity coach and personal trainer, marathon coaching training, and a whole lot of other things. And we are going to be taking a short journey with our experts to give you an insight into how you can cope with this. So we're going to start uh, with our medical expert, and uh, this is going to be going to Dr. Anuj Tiwari. Uh, Dr. Tiwari, can you just explain to our students the difference between a virus and a bacteria? Uh, well, it's difficult to go into the details of it, but I can tell you briefly that uh, like how cell is a unit of life that we have always read in science. Similarly, bacteria is, you can say it, it's a cell. It's a single celled organism and it has all the organs in the cell itself. Like how we all uh, humans have organs like liver, kidneys and all that. Everything is taken is, is done in by a single cell. Okay. And viruses, on the other hand, are just a genetic material packed in a capsule, in, a, in simple terms. They are much, much smaller compared to bacteria. And viruses can infect bacteria. It's not the other way around. Bacteria cannot infect viruses. And viruses need a host to survive. It needs a living organism to survive. 
bacteria can survive on their own if they get the uh, required medium required resources to survive that's the basic difference that i would say uh, a difference between viruses and bacteria viruses keep on replicating inside the host body inside the living organisms they can mutate they can change their genetic material well bacteria can do so but it's a very difficult process for them it's much much easier for viruses to do so so that is one basic thing that i can explain to you how bacteria, bacteria and viruses are, are different thank you doctor so now just taking going on from that now so we've got a we have a small picture about what exactly a virus looks like and what does a bacteria look like so now when we talk about the corona virus and covid 19 can you just uh, very briefly explain to our students the effect on humans so corona virus or the sars cov 2 is the name which is given by the who for the current pandemic going on for the virus and covid 19 is the disease caused by that virus so this is one thing which we important you know, we got to know is that covid 19 is a disease caused by the virus and sars cov 2 is the virus the name of the virus it has been shown to affect multiple organs in our body okay right from lungs to uh, kidneys even the heart uh, the basic uh, symptoms that a person gets after getting infected is headache fever uh, muscle pain joint pains breathlessness on exertion even breathlessness at rest and uh, sometimes we have some skin manifestations also like rashes uh the immune system is also affected it may be sent into an overdrive uh, so much so that it starts damaging your own lungs uh there is a thing called as acute respiratory disease syndrome ards which is an acute shortness in breath uh on doing any any exertional activity uh your oxygen levels in the body go down because your lungs are affected these are the multiple and your uh, heart sometimes gets affected it may uh, increase the rate of your heart it may decrease the rate of your heart depending upon person to person uh, liver can also get affected so it's basically a multi system involvement uh, sometimes patients may not have anything it might be an asymptomatic infection where they do not show any symptoms and sometimes they may be so serious that they may require ventilators so this is how it affects it's a multi system involvement not a single organ is affected it's a kind of a battery of organs that is affected in this uh, covid 19 and everything is labeled as covid 19 thank you dr divari uh, as you are one of the front line fighters in this battle against covid 19 uh, what are the precautions one should take to protect themselves i know there is a whole lot of general precautions and there's a, uh, there's a lot of material that is coming out on a regular basis but with your own personal experience of being in the front line um, is there something that you would like to share as a as a, a precaution for our students and guide our youngsters especially our younger ones on how they should protect themselves the few basic uh, things that we need to follow is to wear a mask always especially which covers your mo- um, uh, nose and mouth uh, properly and and it fits you well there should be no gaps between your skin and the mask it should be fitting well number 2 is to wash your hands regularly uh and or by uh, soap water at least for 20 to 40 seconds you have to wash your hands or use a alcohol based hand sanitizer and following physical distancing which which is roughly 6 feet distance between any person that you come across uh and someone who is ill or so if you are ill definitely do not go out of the house uh these are the basic things which you need to do and i think that is the that that should be it not nothing uh, extra thank you so that's from the medical perspective we're just going to continue with that now as we're talking about precautions now ekta i'd like to bring you in now uh how importance is a balanced diet in life in general and especially now uh, in covid times to improve and uh, strengthen yourself so balanced diet is something that provide all the important vitamin minerals and nutrient which will keep your body healthy and strong so if your body is healthy and if your body is strong 
you will have a better sleep you it will boost your uh, mood and you know it will give you good energy also it will improve your health basically when you have a balanced healthy diet uh, it will help you to make your you know physical health and your mental health strong so it's very important that you have a wholesome meal a balanced diet to be physically and mentally fit and when we talk about a balanced diet uh, in a country like india uh, which has got uh, a cuisine that changes for every 10 or 20 25 kilometers uh, when we talk about an indian diet uh, what do you think constitutes a balanced or a healthy plate in an indian diet whenever we think about indian meals indian diet the the first thing that comes to our mind is carbs everywhere we see is carbs all thanks to you know the roti the rice because we indians are you know our plate is full of either roti or rice or bread something like this you go to north you go to west you go to east anywhere roti or rice would be there but the quantity doesn't matter the quality matters so when we talk about a healthy meal a healthy plate an indian plate let's divide it into four parts so the first the quarter part of our indian you know plate should be carbs so carbs could be as a told quantity doesn't matter much but the quality matters but the quantity the quality that matters it could be under a whole grain so when we're talking about about carbs uh, you can you know always choose like whole grains like you can use uh, you know unpolished or semi polished rice millets or you know there are foxtail millets there are so many millets available these days and which are not used in our urban cooking but they are amazing so you know you can use millet you can use unpolished or semi polished rice you can use barley you can use you know beans you can use vegetables also so one fourth should be our carbohydrate which comes from different varieties the another one fourth should be protein so protein can come from you know different part like if you uh, go to north so they you know the north people are very fond of non veg so they can have you know chicken they can have egg you can have you know dals and everything even in if you go to south they are very fond of you know uh, like sambar they are eating sambars they are eating fish so adding some you know dals pulses your chicken your dairy uh, you know these kind of things proteins should cover another one fourth of it and another half of the plate should be with your fruits and vegetables so five to seven servings of your fruits and vegetable is very important no matter what state you go the entire meal should be worked like this so one fourth should be a carbohydrate which contains of all the whole grains another should be a protein and half of your plate should be with your fruit, uh, with your fruits and vegetable which should be uh, you know it have it should have you know at least five to seven servings say about lot of salads you can add or vegetables otherwise if you know if you are not want to have fruits if you are not fond of having lot of vegetable just grab a glass of vegetable juice which i guess a uh, vegetable juice is something which will nourish your body will give you all the you know nutrients or you know maximum of the vitamin antioxidants going to work really well so i guess uh, so you know you have to divide your plate like this and talking about fats it should be in moderation you need to avoid the trans fat all the you know fat which are solid so for example having vanaspati or having yellow butter for the fat is not at all good for the health you can rather than be going for uh, you know yellow butter try to shift to white butter which is uh, you know we usually you know we indians are blessed we get dairy products easily from a nice source we can take you know white butter uh, at our home right and we have desi ghee is a very good source of fat it's a good fat you can use mustard oil olive oil so these are the plant based fats are a good source to so try to include that in a diet and another should be hydration you need to drink water also so that's how it works the entire plate works okay uh, so there we go we have a brief idea about what constitutes a healthy plate in an indian context you need to divide it well and now when we talk about these four components on the plate and uh, can we have a can you just throw a little more light onto the role of these four components and what they do inside your body and how they help you uh, to develop your immunity and your growth okay so when we see there are two different things in this when we are talking about immunity first let's talk about the immunity uh, when we talk about immunity 70 to 80% of our immunity is in our gut that is inside the body right so 
you need to take care of your, your immunity because immunity take care of your, you know, of you. So if you're taking care of your immunity, you'll be more stronger. So when you're taking care of your gut, and how do you take care of your gut? By eating good bacterial food. So what are the good bacterial food, which are easily available in every Indian kitchen? That is dahi, curd. You can add achar, any pickle, homemade pickle, idli, uh, any fermented food is very good for our gut, which will build your immunity. Uh, also, you know, uh, uh, food which are high in vitamin C, all those citrus food like pineapple, oranges, lemon, all the kind of fruits, uh, adding a lot of green vegetables, fruits and vegetables. So basically adding a lot of color. So the 50%, the half the portion that we were talking about the plate, it's fruits and vegetables. So if you include mm -hmm. more fruits and more vegetable in your diet, it's going to increase your immunity, right? Because it's going to help your gut. So if your gut is strong, nothing's going to go wrong. It will take care of your health. It will boost your immunity. It will boost your energy level. It will boost your mood also. So having a lot of fruits and vegetables will help. So basically the micronutrients are very important to take care. So add a lot of fruits and vegetables. So it's going to boost your immunity. It's going to boost everything. Talking about the carbs, the quarter plate of the carbs, 70% of the energy usually we get from carbohydrate. So, but if you are eating refined carbs, right? If you're not taking whole grain carbs, it's going to have a lot of health issues in future. These days, a lot of kids also have uh, many health issues like diabetes. They, you know, they can't have a lot of physical activity. They feel breathless. So you need to have whole grains, add more of whole grains in your diet, more of millets, unpolished or semi-polished rice. That will work really well for you. So the energy is coming from here. Now talking about the protein, the other one fourth of your plate, the protein, 75% of uh, the protein, you know, goes to our dry, uh, you know, body, you know, the development. So like your hair, your skin, your organs, your bones, your tissue. So 75% goes there. So it's a very important part for our body. So you need to include a good amount of protein and a good quality protein in your diet. So if you want to see, you know, your skin is glowing, your bones are strong, your muscles are strong, you have a lot of energy. If you need all those things in you, you have to be very careful of what kind of protein and how much protein you are taking. So at least 15 to 20% of your energy should come from protein. So make sure that you add good quality of protein. If you need good energy, good skin, good hair, strong bones, strong muscles. So protein is very important. Okay, there we go. So we have uh, had a quick insight into what constitutes a healthy plate, the role of balanced uh, diet in life, and how carbohydrates, protein, and the rest of the things help to improve your immunity. So now we're going to bring in our fitness uh, guru, uh, Jitendra Behera. Hi. Uh, when we talk about fitness, especially for our youngsters, we talk about our school-going children, uh, how would we put this across to them simply and say, are you, what is fitness? See, the fitness is something that a person can do activities much easier, right? To run faster, walk faster, or do anything which is, his heart rate is not going down or like his heart rate has been uh, getting back faster to him or her. Because uh, defining a fitness is that a person who can do, to lift something much easier or uh, jump or run or do any kind of activities, right? So that way you can uh, say, uh, there are two children, one children that does any kind of activities, but he gets faster his breath back. And our other person, other, other baby or other children who is doing any activities, which is not getting back his heart to the point uh, faster, you cannot call the children, he's a fitter or fitness is good enough for him. So when we talk about fitness now, and when we say the components of fitness, uh, so in your experience now, how, would you advise our children the components of fitness? What are the areas that they should focus on to develop their fitness? See, but basically there are five components of fitness, right? So one, you can talk about the muscle strength, right? The for children, what the lift the book or lift their school bag, depending on their muscle strength. Uh, or maybe the same five years, two children will be, uh, one can lift the five kilos of bag much easier than the other children cannot lift it much easier. That way you can uh, value them that their uh, uh, muscle strength. Now, if we talk about our next second, uh, his uh, or her uh, uh, of, uh, of fitness uh, component, right? Uh, his cardio. Uh, suppose a children is running, 
uh, one children can run faster than the other one, right? So that that's when you count as a children's uh, uh, cardiovascular endurance, right? When you talk about a muscular endurance, is that uh, lifting that same school bag and running for a, a 200 meter or 50 meters, or the other children cannot run for that place, it will be like you define as the children's, uh, uh, this children is much more fitter than the other children, right? So when you talk about a uh, aesthetic way that the uh, how the children are carrying their muscles, uh, depending on their fitness level. A person who's uh, the the children who's like little fatter would be having less of muscle mass than the children who's a thinner will be having much more muscle mass, right? Or uh, then again, you have talk about uh, bending things, lifting things. Those are called of flexibilities. So that you can take it as a one more of component of fitness. Uh, there are you see that there are some children they can do a somersault, but there are some children it takes some time to lift their pencils from now. So that way, the flexibility has been evaluated as their fitness components. So we're talking basically about speed, strength, agility, balance, endurance. Balance, endurance, and everything. So five all comes together. The whole components, all those components there. So when right. a person is able to bring all these components into the physical activity, they are able to do their daily living activities. Activities. So that's right. When now, when we talk about, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not nice to say somebody is unfit, but there is uh, there are children who are fit and there are children who are unfit. So uh, we just mentioned some things about, you know, doing the daily living activity. But how would you classify the difference between a kid who is fit and somebody who is unfit? See, the same children go to their school, right? They have to carry a bag, which is two to three kilos of books, right? So the same children go to the school carrying those books and their shoulders and walking, right? You get to see uh, there are children that go faster, walk faster, reach the school faster. And there are children who cannot just reach their school faster. Because then there you can evaluate the children's their fitness level that uh, thinking that lifting that two to three kilos of school bag and not able to reach at the point at a particular time, right? Suppose they have to reach the school at 10 o'clock, right? They started at it's just the school is 10 minutes away from the house, but they have to reach at 10 o'clock. Uh, there are two children starts from their home at the same time. Uh, one will be reaching faster than the other will be reaching slower, right? Then you can evaluate the person that but the children are, uh, this children is much more fitter and this children is much more. Yeah, but, but we talk about the bags. My experience in schools these days is uh, uh, very I, heavy. It's heavy. The bags are heavy, uh, but the saddest part is the children are not carrying the bags anymore. It's the grandfather, the grandmother, or right. mother. They are the ones who are carrying the bags for the children. So they're easy. So even that little bit of fitness that they were getting is being yeah. lost now because somebody else is doing the work for them. Right. So I, uh, the most important takeaway here would be like, you know, carrying, being independent and carrying your own bag. Your own is bag, water bottles. Your own fitness. You know, not yeah. the bag on to somebody else and asking them. Right. To, yeah, that's, a, that's a, a very valid thing there. The easy way to sort of develop your fitness is to carry your bag at school, balance it properly, make sure it's tight on, it's, uh, it's tight on your back and you're able to posture is maintained correctly, then you should be able to. It's also a mini workout for you during the day. Right, so we're going to come right. back, Dr. Uh, Tiwari. Uh, so when we come back to school, uh, what do you think is the new normal going to be looking like in school when children come back. We don't know when we are going to come back, but when we come back, what is the new normal going to be? So what? Uh, so there have been some uh, guidelines being issued by the various organizations who are looking after this, but uh, what, what I feel uh, uh, India has not yet decided to uh, open up schools yet. Uh, but one thing which is for sure is uh, mask will be mandatory for all anyone about two years of age will have to wear a mask all the time. Then there will be spacing between students. Uh, I don't know how will Indian schools manage that, but yes, uh, spacing of at least three feet, minimum three feet and ideally six feet apart. Uh, if that is not possible, then uh, there might be glass shields which might be used uh, on the desk. The number of students coming in the same class will be like, uh, students will not be jumbled up from here and there, classes will be fixed so that to reduce the number of people they come in contact with. The teachers uh, will have to wear the mask all the time. 
I don't know how they will be able to speak uh, so much after wearing the mask, but this is how it will look like. We will not be able to socialize so much in schools as we generally do. Uh, there might be some restrictions on the cafeteria part, uh, the re recess or break that we call. Uh, everyone might have to get their own food. And uh, also sharing food will also be a concern now. It won't be as easy as it was earlier. These are the few things which, which I think will change. Uh, and also the number of, number of uh, students in one class might be restricted from now on to say less than 20, 30 at once to reduce the number of people coming in contact with each other so that the contact tracing is easier. And anyone, and they might be screened for temperature, they might be screened for any symptoms of uh, COVID before they enter the school. Uh, and they might have to not like not come to the school if, if they have any symptoms, they should inform the authorities. Like I think all these guidelines will come in place once we think of opening schools. So do you see the future of school where children are coming at the gate and they have to be checked for their temperature before they enter into the school compound? I think that can be a big possibility. Like, like, yes, I think that I, I see that happening uh, anytime when the school reopens. I think it's for the betterment of everyone that someone who has fever does not uh, come to school, skips their school, someone who has cough, someone who has a runny nose, someone who's coughing or anything of that sort, uh, they definitely should not come to the school. They should inform the, their uh, respective teachers or coordinators beforehand. And it's better if they do not even get off their house. So yeah, these things, I think I think it's like the same. Wherever we go now, uh, there's always a temperature check. I think everyone will be subject to that once the schools open. And uh, what do you see uh, like before COVID, uh, pre-COVID, when children came to school in the morning, uh, they, hang, they used to hang out with their friends before the bell rang for them to go to class. And after school was over, again, you were hanging around with your friends. Do you see changes in this now? Uh, yes, preferably the parents themselves will not want their children to hang around now. But but as as I said, you know, children have their mind of their own. They will tend to do things which they like and they, what they have been waiting for since so many months. So I think what we can do is, you know, wear your mask all the time. And even if you want to meet your friends, maintain a distance of at least six feet apart. And then you can talk it out. Do not re remove your mask whenever you're talking. The people have a habit of lowering their mask when they talk. That should not be done. That should not be the whole point of wearing the mask is to prevent all these things. So whenever they talk, they will have to keep their mask on, especially covering the nose. And then they can do it. And also they should always remember whom they have met, uh, have their restricted circle of friends so that whenever someone gets symptoms, it is easier to have a contact tracing. The whole point of all this is to, uh, to, contact, to, to trace the people they have come in contact with. So have their own limited people whom they meet and uh, keep the numbers less. Uh, the lesser people they meet, the better it is for everyone. Okay. And uh, once kids are back in school, uh, and uh, so how do you see the previous breaks that we used to have, the short recess, the long recess? Uh, do you think there are going to be guidelines for that? And also... Uh, what would happen once we have the vaccine, once the vaccine comes in, uh, all these things change, will we be able to go back to the old normal? Okay, the first part of the question, the recess and the break. I think what, what we can do is uh, we can change the timing of the recess for different classes. You know, some section of the class has a recess 15 minutes before, some 15 minutes later, so that the number of people at one point who can come in contact in the corridor is lesser. Okay, so that is one thing. And yes, sharing of food is also now a concern now because you will have your, uh, that, that, that might not be possible or might not be as easy, I would say. Uh, you should know that, so there's a concept called a social bubble. Social bubble involves a certain number of people meeting again and again. And there is no one else coming into that picture. So if someone gets infected, we know there's only a specific number of people who are, have to be traced back to. So that is one thing that students need to do is keep their circle limited. Uh, I know it's, it's not a good way, actually a good thing that we have not been taught that way, but 
uh, these are desperate times and desperate measures are needed. So always uh, uh, do not take anything from outside. Get your own food, preferably. Do not share food. Whenever you eat, make sure that you are maintaining a distance of at least three to six feet apart. Uh, I don't know how much that will be possible in many schools, but yes, that is one thing that if if done, it is better. And uh, change the timing of the breaks for different classes so that not everyone is coming out at once. Secondly, if vaccine is available, uh, there's still time for that. Of still few more months to go. But yes, once vaccine is available and everyone has been vaccinated, then I think it is possible to go back to the usual normal that earlier we had before the pandemic era. Okay. Thank you so much. I, uh, so, Ekta, I wanted to bring you back in now. When we're talking about uh, immunity, uh, can you give our students uh, pointers onto foods that help to boost immunity? So, as we were discussing earlier, uh, immunity, you know, it's 70 to 80 percent is in our gut, right? But uh, rest. So there are three pointers, I would say, of immunity. It's not only just the food that helps you to boost your immunity. There are three pointers, I would say. So one is taking care of your outside. So that is the hygiene level, the washing your hands, keeping your surroundings clean is one point, right? To keep your immunity in check. Number two would be, you know, uh, taking care of your lifestyle. So sleeping, uh, you know, having a good sound sleep, uh, moving more, working out, you know, it's, you have to be physically active and maintaining your lifestyle. That is the second point. And the third and the most important is your food, right? So when we talk about food again, gut, we students, you have to take care of your gut. You have to eat food which will help you to improve your gut, to make your gut strong. So as we were talking earlier, the good bacterial foods, which we discussed, and rest would be vitamin C. So vitamin C, we all know, has citrus food and all the you know vegetables. A lot of vegetables we have. You're having your oranges. You're having your pineapple. You're having lemon. So lemon is one thing which you know is very good as a vitamin C. Eat lot of fruits, but do not drink a glass of fruit juice. Always drink a glass of vegetable juice. And secondly, you know, uh, zinc. Zinc is something again very important, which will help you to boost your immune. So, uh, you know, if you're non-vegetarian, you can have, you know, seafood like oyster, fish, prawns, they are very high in zinc. But if you're vegetarian, you need to add, again, you need to add a lot of colors in your diet, a lot of, you know, again, green vegetables. So green vegetables could be your spinach, your any leafy vegetables, your, you know, ladyfinger, your, you know, there's so many different, different vegetables, all the colorful and especially the green one will help you to boost your, you know, immunity. And also try to add lots of nuts and seeds in your diet because nuts and seeds will give you you know good amount of zinc in your body and when the level of zinc is you know high in your body when you have zinc rich food it will definitely improve your immunity and third is biocalcium so what it does it so all the you know uh, fruits or the vegetables which are different colors of tone of like red and orange like carrots and tomatoes and watermelons so these kind of fruits you know uh, all the antioxidant things will help you to again boost your immunity. So that's why again and again, I'm focusing on that 50% of your plate, that is adding lots of colors in your uh, plate. So eat lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. If you want to feel good, you want to feel healthy, you want to have good skin, good energy, good sleep, you want to boost your uh, you know, mood. And you know, so the, you have to do all these things, your immunity will definitely go up. So, you know, these are the foods will help you to boost your immunity and always remember boost, you know, this immunity is not like a genie that will just come up and your energy will go up. So no, so eating, just eating, you know, your mom has given you to eat, you know, almonds or walnuts or seeds, you had one or two days or you had for a week, it's not going to work. Your immunity, you know, it's a natural, uh, you know, uh, process of a human body. So it takes at least three to four weeks to boost up. So you need to include good amount of, you know, nutritive food, all the clean food, which is coming directly from the nature, not what is opening from a bottle or you're opening from a packet. So those things want to drip your immunity, will make you ill, your energy levels will go low, you won't have so much of energy. So if you want good energy, good immunity, eat what is coming directly from the nature, what is cooked in your kitchen, which your mom says it's healthy, it's actually healthy. So eating nuts and seeds and fruits and vegetables, 
pineapples, dahi, the fermented foods, like we were talking earlier, idli, dahi, achar, you know, these things are really good for immunity. We're basically talking about a rainbow on the plate. Yes, that's the most important thing. So if you're eating the colors, like, you know, if you're eating a lot of colors in your plate and not making your plate very boring, just I don't eat mango, I don't eat banana. I see a lot of, you know, uh, especially I see a lot of kids these days because I handle a lot of, uh, you know, school uh, kids also. So they say, especially girls, they say, no, we can't eat mango, we can't eat banana, we can't eat, you know, this particular food because it's fattening. No, it's not. Having that bar of chocolate or having that chota packet of chips or having that cola is bad for you. These things are not, enjoy banana, enjoy grapes, enjoy chiku, enjoy mangoes. That's something that's going to nourish your body from inside. Those packet opening things is not going to nourish your body. So if you want to feel good, you want to feel energetic, you want that, you know, we are going out and this coronavirus or any XYZ virus doesn't harm you. Eat natural things that nature is giving you. Avoid all those fatty things and, you know, I understand being kids, you all love having, you know, ice creams and chocolates and, you know, chips and all those things, but limit it down, right? So if you want to be more healthy and if you want to, you know, enjoy your life, you need to focus on a real food, food which is actually the mother earth is giving us rather than what the industries are giving us. So if you focus on those things, trust me, when you, you know, uh, reach, you know, your early 30s or late 40s, 50s, 60s, you'll be strong enough to handle all the situations and, you know, your, because, you know, food not only is keep you physically fit, it keeps you mentally fit as well. So if you're eating healthy, you feel so energetic that your mind, you can focus on your work. So that's something very important. So eat your colors, eat everything that Mother Earth is giving you. That's going to build your immunity, that's going to do everything for you. Now, when we talk about immunity uh, and boosting your immunity, uh, especially for younger people, how important is the role of supplements? See, supplements again, I would say it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, immunity is not a genie that will come out of a bottle, right? So if, you know, you want to build your immunity, if you're, you're still fine, right? And you want to build your immunity, you have to take step by step. You need to eat you know, a natural food. You need to include a lot of foods and vegetables in your diet. Until, unless you have some issues, you know, some medical issue that your doctor prescribes you for uh, your supplements. Until and unless, please don't go to a medical store and just threaten and pronounce that you need a supplement to boost your immunity because it's not going to just open you open your bottle and blah, your immunity, you get immunity. No, it's not going to happen. It is, you know, a process. It's a natural uh, thing of our body. So it's going to build slowly. So rather than just depending on supplements to build your immunity, work on the natural things that nature has given us to build our immunity, work on your gut, work on your lifestyle, sleep at the same time, wake up at the same time, uh, you know, hydrate yourself, move more. And if your immunity is going to raise up, you don't need any supplement. Yes, until unless your doctor asks you to, if you have some particular kind of health issues. Thank you. Thank you, Ekta, for that. Uh, I'd like to bring Jitendra back. Uh, Jitendra, now, when we talk about fitness uh, for all our youngsters, uh, fit, school was a big part of their fitness. Sports was a big part of their fitness. But unfortunately now in COVID times, uh, the opportunities to go outside and take part in sports is being reduced a lot. Uh, unless you're living in a bigger space, you have your own little yard at the back. So... How do you uh, look at it and what is your advice for those who do not have access to play fields, gyms, and you have to work on your fitness at home? It's for the basically, for nowadays you see your children, they're always behind their iPads, behind their phones because they're at home, right? So they can't go outdoor, they can't play anything, they can't do anything out of sort, right? But if you see when they were in a school, they used to do a PT, right? Which is like they used to do a jumping jack, they used to do a parade, those kind of things which is, uh, they've been taught in the school, you can, uh, the moms and dads should uh, help them to do at least 10 to 15 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day, those children, right? Because uh, uh, being at home and there's no space that they are not able to do anything at all. They're just sitting at home and playing in the games on the phone or watching iPads. If you talk about a person like us or anybody who cannot go to a gym or there's no access of the gyms nowadays, now you get to See, there are a lot of online classes goes of the yoga. You can do a lot of functional training. 
you can do your own body resistance training and depending on that what a person can do a person has to choose a activity which is he or she can do it easily himself or herself at a place where there is no access to a fitness club or a gym uh you live in a, nowadays we live in a buildings now that uh, instead of using the lift we should use the staircase that's the better way to get your fitness because there's nothing where you can go and do it right so access is only that your staircase so this way you can improve your stamina strength and your muscle endurance is like this so a fitness at home can be done even just by walking up and down the stairs so you yeah, have sure use that at home okay uh, now if uh, we're talking about uh, uh, the importance of a healthy diet and its role in helping one's achieve uh, ekta was talking about it uh, what would be your advice uh, to children who are indulging in moderately to high intensity activities at home how do they balance their diet uh, with their activities basically see that uh, the children which is they're not getting that enough of like uh, activities outside they are in indoor all the time right so we talk about a uh, diet nutrition that uh, uh, their parents has to make sure that the children are eat the homemade food which is cooked at home not the packages food you give them a little bit of protein like give them a eggs if it is vegetarian give them a, some of uh, your proteins like comes from a dal any kinds of nuts it comes from a beans it comes from paneer and it comes from uh, dairy milk or uh, dairy products but uh, depending on that you as a being adult that you should choose something that you give it to your children which is not going to make them fat because the activity is very less right because they are burning of calories are very less they are not playing anymore so if the mother or father or parents can understand to give them a little food which is good and taste you to eat them also because nowadays the children are all fussy they would feel like to eat something so give them a protein based good carbohydrate along with a good fat fat is like this comes from your fats like your nuts if we talk about a good protein would come around from your uh, paneer eggs and fish and chicken if they are non vegetarian and so carbohydrate also has come from your rice and all the grains which is like depend on what kind of grains they get home right there are white rice there's a brown rice but the quantity has to be given to the children according to their activities what do you think uh, about children wearing mask while they are exercising should they wear a mask while they are exercising at home or uh, if they are outside on the terrace or anything like that see the problem with the mask is that uh, wearing a mask and doing activities any kind of activity is going to be the trouble because of the uh, breathing which is the oxygen in your carbon dioxide is going to be give you a friction right so that the amount of oxygen you in hell you're not going to exhale that much of your carbon dioxide because wearing the mask would give you a trouble during your kind any kind of activities it's not that you're doing uh, uh exercising or you're walking in the stair but there you need everywhere your oxygen to be go better and your carbon dioxide to come out better right because of the mask all the time it has been holding your nose and the mouth the both thing is complicating each other to goes inside your body it going to how many later on if you are at home and do not wear a mask because you are at home you know that you are safe because your parents are there and you are there you don't need a mask to wear and do exercises if you're going out and doing it and depend on that how many people is around you to do an exercises or how many people around you to doing your stairs so depending that uh, thing has to be taken care of it i would not suggest somebody to do a exercise wearing a mask because uh, see there are you see in there are a lot of videos that uh, people wearing a mask can do it but there are altitude mask but this which has a, a nerve which gives you the oxygen to be come in and gives you the uh, carbon dioxide to go out they are specially made they are very expensive so that we are not wearing those masks we are just wearing a mask which is a a, a cloth or something like that so that basically comes down to the about the social bubble that uh, dr tiwari was talking about staying within your right yeah uh, so let me let me bring back dr tiwari now uh, Dr. Tiwari, when I we come back to school, and if one of my friends has got a sore throat or a running nose, uh, what should my reaction be to him? Or okay, her? first, uh, yeah. So one thing very importantly is that do not stigmatize this disease. You know, the more you stigmatize it, people are afraid to tell their symptoms. You know, support them 
mentally be there for them but at the same time maintain your physical distance okay just be them be for them mentally like you know uh, make them help them ki if they need anything help them out but maintain your physical distance inform your teacher or the coordinator tell them or the person who has it should also tell it on its own okay if you stigmatize it people do not tell it okay that is number one so do not stigmatize it uh, support but do not stigmatize it and also one thing very importantly that person should go for the isolation at home uh, there should be arrangements done for that person to go back home uh, anyone who has come in contact with that person should be traced back uh by the teacher or the coordinator whoever is looking after the kids uh and do not do not go close to them it, it's not it's nothing like if you are in the same you might get uh, go, uh the same thing if you maintain your distance of 6 feet if the person who has got the symptoms is wearing a mask then it is safe it's safer for everyone else also and that's a wearing a mask is very important so if you are wearing a mask the person who has symptoms is wearing a mask and if you're standing 6 feet apart you do not have to panic you do not have to worry okay you are prefer you are the more or less safe and you can just inform the teacher or the coordinator or the person himself who has it can inform the teacher or the coordinator and further from there things can be taken like if they can if they need to get tested they can get tested or they can go for a home isolation majorly children do not have severe symptoms so that is a very good thing uh, so that is one thing if just inform whoever the higher authority is there do not try to hide it do not try to stigmatize it and what about uh, hugging my friends when i come back to school that I well uh, i think that would be a bit difficult right now but if at all if if the urge is too strong make sure that you both are wearing a mask when you do it and uh, once you go back home uh, put your clothes first thing and then you then you can just go bath and then do whatever the next you want to do before doing anything in the house that is one thing which you should follow go home first thing remove your clothes put in the soap water have a bath uh, have a good bath with soap water and then come out and then do whatever you want to do okay no way right. thank you um ekta want to come back to you uh the role of our the three white poisons in our food uh you know uh, something which our children are being bombarded with all all, all with all the time around them uh a little bit of uh, insight into how we can create an awareness to these three things okay the three white poison that i would say would be a three r's as well right so the first white poison that is refined white sugar so you know sugar white sugar is it's hidden everywhere it's not that you know it's white in front of you it is in your chocolates it is in your bakery stuff so the the white sugar the refined sugar is the main white poison for kids the second white poison would be refined white salt which can be easily replaced with uh pink salt or black salt which is seda namak and kala namak and the third and the most uh, you know uh, this thing um you know the common white poison is white refined flour the maida so that are the three white poison for kids which are easily you know hidden in their junk food in their you know desserts and everywhere that's going to drain down their you know health so that's the worst you know enemy for kids that's sugar it's salt and it's maida so these are the three main white poison that are hidden everywhere in maximum all the junk food and the packet foods available these days which are attractive to kids and uh, what about the, uh hydration and its importance okay so see when we talk about hydration right hydration is mostly associated with your energy levels your concentration and your focus right so if you are well hydrated you can focus well you can you know concentrate on your work your energy levels would be good but if you're not well hydrated your energy levels going to go down you feel lethargic and the moment you feel you know you have the urge of that thirst not of drinking water but that thirst that you feel that i'm thirsty uh you know it means your body is already 7% dehydrated with sipping water and hydration doesn't only have ha- you know happens with water if you are having good amount of fruits and vegetables 
you know water based fruits and vegetables your body is well hydrated so there is no access thing that you have to complete this amount of water throughout the day yes eight glasses every one should but by side of that you need to have good fruits and vegetables so that your body is well hydrated so now the first sign of you know dehydration when you're not hydrating yourself well you know the first sign would be your dry mouth lethargicness uh right headaches your energy levels going low you're you're feeling like you know drained so that's the first sign and the complications comes you know when you have kidney stones you have seizures you know body heat strokes or you know the uh, the blood volume goes down so you know these kind of things happen if you are not hydrating yourself and the complications come so it's very important that you keep sipping water but uh, you know there are a lot of people and especially kids i see you know when even to my niece and nephew when i say you need to hydrate yourself they get a bottle of cola or you know those tetra pack juices that's not going to make you hydrated that will dehydrate you uh, from inside so if you want to hydrate yourself have water if you feel that you know water is tasteless add lemon in it add some fruits in it something like this but no sugary products it's not going to help you anyway so hydration it's very important so that you know you don't get that feel of you know your energy levels going down and all those things so that's why keep hydrating yeah uh jitendra this is this one yes. uh, when uh, when we come back to schools uh, do you see us the, the children in school having their regular pe classes and being able to play before school and after school post covid yeah basically see children you can stop them they will be playing right so that uh, but the school has to be taken care of them by seeing that they are not like you know doing that indulging of the many of children all together playing and not wearing mask you know uh, getting contacted by each other and because you don't know when this can like when somebody has a fever because in the school if they go they don't know exactly that they got a fever but after some time also they can get fever or something like that any kind of uh contact to any other children may will be get a trouble but uh, the school has to be very careful to see the children are not playing all together or uh, like they are playing also as they are far away from each other and uh, that sort of has to be taken care of lot i seems to be and uh when the children come back into school uh one of the biggest parts of school life is the inter school sports competitions and things like that do you think uh, this academic year uh, will they be able to go back and participate in competitions and things like that this academic year depending on the vaccines right and also is, uh, because if the pandemic is like going the way it is going right wearing a mask and playing any kind of game would be a very tough for them and also being there 6 to 8 months in, the, in indoor in, in house not been exercising the stamina the strength is always gone right to go and play any kind of sports which is competitive sports you need a lot of stamina you need a lot of strength which is there not been there right it will be a trouble for them if they are playing the must be those children are uh, really working hard at home they must be doing any kind of sort kind of uh, activities nowadays you see there are a lot of online classes goes with the coaches that they train their children their children uh, their activities of those uh, uh, sports people that play so depending on that would be a very uh, big uh, this thing i believe so there we are we have had a, a very good discussion uh, for the last uh, 45 minutes on the role of uh, from a medical perspective from a nutrition perspective and from a fitness perspective and uh, thank you to all our guests who have joined us the experts and once again to the students uh, uh exam the app by sundra me class which is going to be something which is going to be very very different from what you have been experiencing so far with education apps exam app is specially made for the bal bharati board students and is exactly as per the bal bharati board textbooks as i said earlier the app will have a whole lot of videos mcq tests revision video notes and much more it's for the students from class 1 to 10 and it's got a whole lot of exciting features and is already being used uh, by children of other state boards so when uh, the as soon as you are, you are going to be having access uh, from this webinar to a promotional offer where you can download the exam app from the play store uh, from google play store 
You can select the course you want and click on the promo code, enter the promo code, E-Class Webinar, and you get the course free for a few days. Once you like the course, you can even purchase it online. The package is being provided at a very good rate and is available for the entire year. So we will be uh, giving you a pop-up very soon with the details about where you can get in touch with us by email or by telephone. And uh, once again, thank you very much to uh, fitness expert Jitendra Bera, our medical expert Dr. Anuj Tiwari, and uh, to our nutritionist expert, Ekta Sood. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, and look forward to seeing you all back in school safe and sound.